If you've been following my coverage of the Israeli massacre in Gaza, you'd know that I am very dissatisfied with Joe Biden's predictably terrible response here and his unconditional support to Israel as they carry out war crimes and an ethnic cleansing in Palestine. But thankfully, now things are starting to change. I stated in a different video that it kind of feels as if we're at a turning point where the tide is turning in favor of Palestinian human rights and the excuses that individuals who vociferously defend Israel used to use are no longer persuasive. And better yet, we have a member of Congress who is Palestinian, who is actually able to challenge power in a way that we've never seen before. Now, Rashida Tlaib, Palestinian-American lawmaker, actually confronted Joe Biden to his face and called out his unconditional support to Israel. And Luke Broadwater and Nicholas Vandos of the New York Times write about this, saying Representative Rashida Tlaib, Democrat of Michigan, confronted President Biden on Tuesday over his support for Israel amid its bombing campaign against Hamas in Gaza, urging him to stop enabling a government she said was committing war crimes against Palestinians, according to a Democratic aide familiar with the exchange during a conversation on a tarmac in Detroit, where Mr. Biden had arrived to visit a Ford factory near her congressional district. Ms. Tlaib echoed a scathing speech she delivered last week on the House floor, telling the president that he must do more to protect Palestinian lives and human rights, said the aide, who spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe her remarks. Ms. Tlaib, who could be seen making her case to Mr. Biden as she greeted him at the steps of Air Force One, told the president that the status quo was only enabling more killing and that his current policy of unconditional support for the Israeli government under Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was not working, the aide said. Mr. Biden shook Ms. Tlaib's hand after the conversation and later praised that the congresswoman during his public remarks at the factory in Dearborn. And if you want to know what he said, here's the video. I'm Rashid Tlaib. Where's Rashid? I tell you what, Rashid, I want to say to you that uh, I admire your intellect, I admire your passion, and I admire your concern for so many other people. And it's my, from my heart, I pray that your grandma and family are well. I promise you I'm going to do everything to see that they are on the West Bank. You're a fighter, and God, thank you for being a fighter. Okay. First of all, her name is Rashida, not Rashid. Second of all, you're the president of the United States. Stop praying. Nobody wants to hear about your thoughts and prayers. Start acting by picking up the phone and threatening to cut off aid to Israel. Just like that. It really is that easy. You can exert the pressure that you have as a leader to stop this, but you're not doing that. And because the Israeli government knows that they have the U.S.'s unconditional support, Benjamin Netanyahu has gotten more brazen than ever, bombing Gaza's sole COVID-19 testing lab and butchering top doctors, further exacerbating the humanitarian crisis that they've already created in Gaza. And that's not even including... Israel bombing a building that housed AP journalists. So spare me. I don't care about your thoughts and prayers. You're the president of the United States. You have the power to act and you're choosing to not act. You've expressed support for a ceasefire, but you refuse to demand a ceasefire unequivocally. And because that's the case, Israel will continue to commit this massacre, commit atrocities in Gaza. In fact, news broke just as I record this that uh, the Israeli government vows to continue their slaughter of Gaza. So it's really infuriating to see politicians who are in positions of power, especially the president, talk about thoughts and prayers. Nobody wants to hear about your thoughts and prayers. Take action. Stop the bloodshed. Use your power and the executive branch's power to do something. But he's not doing it. So, I mean, it's a little ridiculous that the president of the United States, after a member of Congress who's Palestinian begged and pleaded with him, I mean, all he offered was a prayer. It's embarrassing, honestly. He should be embarrassed. That's a terrible response. Now, this is the reaction to an event that took place near Joe Biden's speech. Um, there's many solidarity with Palestine events going on. One of them was in Detroit, and this was the reaction to Joe Biden appearing in their city as he's permitting Israel to do genocide in Gaza. Let me say, the president is down the street right now. He's down in the south end of Dearborn. He thinks he can just walk into Dearborn.
They have shut down the whole South End to make sure that nobody could get close to him, that nobody could let him know how we feel. We have over a thousand people here today. I don't know much about physics, I don't know much about sound, but I know the South End is that way. So can everyone look that way and with the loudest voice you can say, Free, free Palestine! 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 Joe Biden is going to hear us today one way or the other. Again, that was one of many Palestinian solidarity protests taking place around the world right now. So it's nice to see people step up and speak out finally and get on the right side of history and condemn Israeli apartheid and the ethnic cleansing and genocide that they're carrying out currently in Palestine. Uh, but back to uh, Rashida Tlaib, I absolutely commend her. I I'm thankful that we have her voice in Congress to actually speak out, to represent the plight of the Palestinian people, to actually have family in West Bank, uh, to, to plead their case. We never had this before. And it's really important to have that representation in Congress, especially now. So people like the president don't just have one side in his ear. They, they actually get a little bit of pushback. Joe Biden actually hears from Palestinians, from a Palestinian at least, I should say, who's not just going to accept the same tired excuses that we've been hearing for decades at the, as the United States permits Israel to commit these atrocities. Oh, man.